In this video, we're going to review the addition rules. The addition rules are applied when you're working with a union. In other words, the probability of A or B. Note that this also includes the possibility of A and B. The addition rule that you apply is going to depend on whether or not you're working with disjoint events. Events are disjoint when they do not occur together. For disjoint events, the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B. For overlapping events, in other words, events that are not disjoint, the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. You can see that this formula takes into account the overlap between the two events, so the cases where A and B occur together are not counted twice. Let's look at an example of disjoint events. This Venn diagram shows event A and event B, and you can see that there's no overlap between the two events. In this case, the probability of A or B would be equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. Because they're disjoint events, there's no overlap that we need to take into account. Let's look at an example. Of the 1,920 tenure-track faculty members at Penn State University Park, 42% are full professors, 30% are associate professors, and 28% are assistant professors. What proportion of tenure-track faculty at Penn State University Park are associate or assistant professors? In this case, full professor, associate professor, and assistant professor are all disjoint events. They can never happen together. One starts an assistant professor, then gets promoted to associate professor, and finally promoted to full professor. So you can never fit into more than one of these classifications at once. So these are three disjoint events. We can use the first addition rule formula. So the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B. In this case, the probability of being an associate or an assistant professor is equal to the probability of being an associate professor plus the probability of being an assistant professor, or 0.30 plus 0.28, which equals 0.58. So 58% are associate or assistant professors. Now let's look at overlapping events. In this Venn diagram, you can see that there's overlap between events A and B. In this case, we need to use a different formula. The probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. This takes into account the overlap of A and B. If we were to just add the probability of A plus the probability of B, the purple overlap that you're seeing here would end up getting counted twice. This is why we subtract the probability of A and B, so this area overall only gets counted one time. Let's look at an example. Of the 6,424 Penn State faculty members across all campuses, 40% are female, 53% are at University Park, and 20% are females at University Park. So being female and being at University Park are not disjoint events because it is possible to be a female at University Park. In this case, we have to use the second formula. The probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Here, the probability of being female or being at University Park equals the probability of being female plus the probability of being at University Park minus the probability of being female and at University Park. You can see if we just added the proportion who are female plus the proportion who are at University Park, the females at University Park would end up getting counted twice. So we subtract this proportion so that these individuals are not double counted. Here, 0.4L plus 0.53 minus 0.20 equals 0.73. So 73% of Penn State faculty members are females or are at University Park. Let's look at an example using a contingency table. This is a contingency table that was made in Minitab Express that shows the number of students from fall 2015 who owned a dog and owned a cat. 
There are two different ways that I'm going to show you how to solve this. First, let's look at the numbers on the contingency table. There are 225 people who own a dog. There are 117 people who own a cat. But if we were to add the number of people who own a dog plus the number of people who own a cat, the cell here, the people who own both a dog and a cat, would get counted twice. So we would need to take the number of people who own a dog plus the number of people who own a cat minus the 61 people who own both a dog and a cat. So 225 plus 117 minus 61, all divided by 401, gives us 0 0.701. So 70.1% of this sample owns a dog or a cat. We could also solve this problem using the formulas like we did previously. Dog and cat ownership are not disjoint events, right? We have 61 people who own both a dog and a cat. So we'll have to use the second formula. The proportion of people who own a dog or a cat is equal to the proportion that own a dog plus the proportion that own a cat minus the proportion that own a dog and a cat. 225 out of 401 people own a dog, so 0.561 own a dog. 117 out of 401 own a cat, so 0.292 own a cat and 61 out of 401 own both a dog and a cat. So 0.152 own a dog and a cat. We can now plug these numbers into our formula. And we can find that 0 0.701 own a dog or a cat. So you can see when you have a contingency table, you can use the formulas, although oftentimes I find it to be much quicker and straightforward to just take the numbers off the contingency table like we did first. So to summarize our addition rules, for disjoint events, so when we have events that have no overlap, the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B. When we have overlapping events, the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B.